Welcome back. Now more from Utopia. Food waste is the single largest contributor to municipal landfills. As the waste breaks down, methane is created. Methane is one of the worst types of greenhouse gases, much more detrimental than carbon dioxide. But recently, a new facility was built in North Salt Lake that's turning trash into treasure. Roughly 40% of all food grown in the United States ends up in the trash. As a country, we have made great strides in recycling bottles and cans and cardboard, but one missing piece in the recycling puzzle is food waste. So 30% of our landfills are organic waste, whether that's, uh, you know, half of that is is green waste, so that's your yard waste, your trees, tree trimmings, etc., and half is food waste. You could cut that right down the middle just about, but still, like, 30% of our landfills being organic waste that we could process, it has so much energy in it. A 2009 study found that each year in the United States, a quarter of water consumption and over 300 million barrels of oil are used in the production and distribution of food that ends up in landfills. And the organic waste that ends up in landfills is not only taking up space, it is leaking methane into the atmosphere. When the organics biodegrade without the presence of oxygen, methane is released. But what if we could collect this valuable methane? So Wasatch Resource Recovery is a public-private partnership between South Davis Sewer District and All Pro Energy and Water. Uh, these two groups specialize in running anaerobic digesters and building anaerobic digesters. So Wasatch Resource Recovery is able to take in four different types of organic waste, process it, keep it out of the landfills, keep it out of the sewer system, and then turn it into usable products in the end. So we get methane gas and we get a nice extremely carbon-rich, nutrient-rich fertilizer on the back end. The first anaerobic digester for organic waste opened in February of 2019 in North Salt Lake. Anaerobic is a fancy name for without oxygen. Anaerobic digestion is not a new technology. In fact, it's as old as life itself. This is actually the same process that the human body utilizes to break down food into usable energy. European countries have employed anaerobic digesters for food waste for the past 20 or 30 years. The U.S. has been slow to catch on. So we can take in, uh, you know, a lot of liquid manufacturing waste, so byproducts of making um, beer or yogurt or frozen foods, etc. So that all, you know, all of that liquid waste that happens as a byproduct can come here. That's also meat, dairy, oil, carbs, all that kind of food that we typically eat. Um, it can be processed, it can be sugary, all of that can be defined as organic waste. Wasatch Resource Recovery began focusing on the biggest contributors to organic waste in landfills, grocery stores, restaurants, and especially industrial waste. Places have come out of the woodwork that I had no idea would have food waste. So there's a, a paper mill that has some pulp that they, you know, they've got to get rid of that somewhere. Uh, but for the, the vast majority of what will come into our facility is manufacturing plants along the Wasatch Front. So we've got ice cream makers and yogurt makers and frozen food and meat processing places. We've got a ton of manufacturing that happens along the Wasatch Front and they all have byproducts that they can't use, that aren't consumable, that need to be processed somewhere. So that's where the vast majority of what will fill up our digesters comes from. According to studies, if half of the organic waste in the United States each year was put through anaerobic digesters like this one in North Salt Lake, enough electricity could be generated to power two to three million homes. So these three machines that we see here are all of our depackaging machines. So this first little machine that we see, this is our glass breaker. So this is where we get uh, Mexican Cokes, iced coffees, um, beer bottles. They go into this hopper um, and you can see we've got a, a load right here of, of glass Coca-Cola that we need to process. So that glass, those glass bottles head into this little hopper and they go up the conveyor belt. Then we've got a little breaker, a little hammer mill up here in this part of the 
machine and it spits out the broken glass and the the product all into this bin right here and there's a mesh bottom on the bin so all of the liquid drains down through and it catches the glass you can see over here this is where the liquid comes out and it flows down into the digester and then this guy is on a hydraulic lift so we'll lift him up it'll come up and dump into a dumpster that that'll be sitting right here this facility could be considered the end user almost like a landfill and like landfills there are tipping fees for the organic waste but these fees are one-third the cost of dumping in a landfill the tanker trucks will pull into here and they're usually 4,000 to 7,000 gallon tanker trucks they hook up on either side of here and it goes into this massive tank that's underneath us. It's about 40,000 gallons. That 40,000 gallon tank runs through a hydrocyclone, which just means it pulls out all of the, the sand and rocks and pieces of glass and anything that's not, not gonna do great in a digester. And it heads over this way to this tan tank with the steel bolts around it and the metal roof. That's called our hydrolysis tank. So this is sort of an equalizer tank or a tank that just starts the process. So everything gets slurried up in there, water is added, everything becomes sort of equalized and homogenous. Uh, and then it goes from that hydrolysis tank, it stays in there for a couple of days and then it heads into the digester. The industrial digester acts much like our bodies. Naturally occurring microorganisms in those digesters will break down the food waste and convert it to a usable energy source. So the digester are these buildings over here with the white domes on them. It's hard to see against the white sky, but... Uh, so the digesters are sort of where the magic happens. So once they reach that digester, the microorganisms that are naturally occurring in this food have grown enough that they are going at all of this food waste that ends up there. We heat it up to about body temperature and those microorganisms break down that food waste. Without oxygen, they off-gas methane. So that methane is what we're able to capture, we clean it up, and then we put it into the pipeline and it's a renewable natural gas. Unfortunately, most leftover and out-of-date food from grocery stores and restaurants is destined for a landfill. Grocery stores and other food providers worry that food donations could become a liability for business. So this is where anything that comes in from a restaurant, from a grocery store, anything that needs to go through our big depackaging machine comes and gets tipped on this floor right here. So you can see the floor is on a bit of a slope and we've got drains all the way around the floor so that anything that's liquidy, because food waste is very liquidy and dense, so any of the liquids will drain off and we'll be able to capture those in our, uh, in our digester as well. So what happens is we dump the food waste over here and then our massive loader goes and picks up a scoop of it, brings it over here, drives up this little guy and dumps it in the hopper. The equipment contained in the Wasatch Resource Recovery Digester is state-of-the-art. This technology and innovation could not have come at a better time with the dangers our planet faces. This digester is combating global climate change. Rotten food accounts for 34% of all methane emissions and methane is 20 to 80 times more damaging to the environment than CO2. The digester helps globally, but there is also a very important local benefit. When ammonia is released from decaying food, it contributes to the creation of one of the worst forms of air pollution, fine particulate PM2.5. This is especially bad in the Salt Lake Valley. However, when the food waste goes into a digester rather than a landfill, the ammonia is captured in the form of nutrient-rich fertilizer. So in addition to capturing and turning methane from a dangerous greenhouse gas into a usable fuel, the digester also helps air quality in Salt Lake City. We've got all kinds of ideas for how to make this happen in other places. If we reach capacity with the four digesters, 
you know, there's a possibility for this to, to expand and spread. We also are looking, there's a lot of other communities that want this same kind of thing where they are. Food waste is rampant, it's everywhere. We need to have ability to deal with it in more than just along the Wasatch Front. Currently, this digester handles only commercial organics. Future plans include expanding to residential collection. The impact of this digester is already being felt. So just in the first two weeks of us being open, we brought in just a very small amount of trucks and that was 2,000 tons of waste that we saved. This is just in our very, very initial pilot test phase. Uh, and to just think that that 2,000 tons could have gone somewhere where it would have been much less well utilized, I feel like I get to make a difference every day. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. Visit our website to learn more and to watch previous episodes of Utopia. And remember, we don't inherit the earth from our parents, we borrow it from our children. Music